10.6 bond metal theorem. So the bond metal theorem, theorem is all about how to expand bond metals. Now the way we do it right now, actually before I do that, remember th this does not work. You cannot just do this. Oh, that's terrible. It's not x squared plus 1. Mostly it's just lazy. That's not the way it works. If there's a plus sign, it's just locked in. So the way we're supposed to do it is do this. x plus 1 times x plus 1. Distribute. If you do it correctly, you should get x squared plus 2x plus 1. Right? That's what you have to do. Same thing with x plus 1 cubed. Right? It's going to be x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 1. Luckily, we know what that is x plus x squared plus 2x plus 1 times x plus 1 and then from here you can distribute also right so notice it's not going to be x, x cubed plus 1 cubed it doesn't work that way the bottom of the is an easy way to do this because like that's not too bad that's not even too bad but what, once you get to here you really want x plus 1 four times and if you're like yeah I could do that well then how about here x plus 1 times x plus 1 nine times let's take forever so bottom theorem is all about easy so the bottom of the theorem simply states if you have this to the n power that it's gonna be this n to the zero first term second term plus all the law up until you get to this now a lot of this doesn't make sense right now good and that's what and that's that's why i keep on we gotta break this down so first let's talk about what this means this is n to zero, which is simply just a formula that says this. And you're like, oh great, now what does that mean? And that's what the first thing I want to talk about. What is that? That's called a factorial. It's a very simple form formula for factorial. All it is is when you see one of those, is you do, what you do is you multiply that first number by all the numbers less than it until you get down to 1. So for example, if I give you 4 factorial, this is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Four, 12 times 2 is 24. That's it. If I give you uh, 5 factorial, that's this 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Luckily we already know what that is, it's 24, because we just did it. So that's 5 times 24, also known as 120. So if you notice there, 5 factorial is the same thing as saying 5 times 4 factorial. Because all of this is 4 factorial. And that's how factorials work. You just multiply different the whole numbers down. So 6 factorial would be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Also, if you want, 6 is the same thing as saying 6 times 5 factorial. Or if you want, 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. All means the same thing. Okay, why is that important? Because that's how we simplify this part, right? So if you see a binomial coefficient n over r, you can be written like this or like that. All means the same thing. You're going to see it mostly in this form. This is for the formula for it. And I will give you that. I just got to know how to simplify it. So let's say I give you 3 over 1. So based on the formula, it's going to be 3 factorial over the bottom one and 1 factorial times 3 minus 1, which is 2 factorial. Now the way we break this up is it is always the same way. You work with the higher number first. So 3 times 2 times 1 over 1 factorial is this 1. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. Hey, these cancel. 3 over 1 is just 3. Let's do a harder one. Let's do 4 to 2. Using the formula, it's 4 factorial over 2 factorial and then subtract them. 4 minus 2 is 2 factorial. So the top is going to be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The bottom is 2 times 1. That one's 2 times 1. These cancel. It's times 1. And over here you can reduce if you want. Oh, let's just multiply. 12 over 2 which is 6. Okay so that's all fine and good. But how about we get to this one? 7 factorial over 3 factorial, and then subtract them 4 factorial. So there's, there's a little bit of a way to do this. And what it is, is you take the top number, and you expand that down till you get to the bigger number on the bottom. So what I mean by that? It's like this. So 7 times 6 times 4, 5 times 4 factorial. 
I'm going to stop there because I know that's going to cancel with the 4 factorial on the bottom. This one I could write out 3 times 2 times 1. So these cancel. If you notice, 3 times 2 times 1 is sending a 6. That cancels out the 6 there. And all I get is 7 times 5, which is 35. Right, let's use that same trick for 10 over 4. Right, so 10, 10 choose 4. So it's going to be 10 factorial over 4 factorial. Then subtract them, 6 factorial. So the trick here again, write it to the bot. That one meets the bigger one, the top one. That was a sentence. Write, rewrite the top one until it matches the bottom one. So it's 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial. Stop there so I know it's going to cancel out. 4 I could just write as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. These cancel. So then here you got to simplify a little bit. 8 and 4 reduce. 2 and 2 cancel out. And then 3 and 9 reduce a little bit. And I get 10 times 3 times 7. 21 times 10 is 210. So that's how you do that without a calculator. So that's how you do it by hand, I should say. There's actually three ways to do this. One is by calculator, I just mentioned. I'll show you that in a second. The other way is called Pascal's triangle. So let's talk about this. So Pascal's triangle is just an easy way to simplify that stuff. Now, what it is, is a pattern we have to memorize. So it works this way. So you do one, and you bring one down on each side. And then the next time we do one, we add these two up. One plus one is two. Then we do it again. Add these two up. 3, add these 2 up, 3, bring down the 1s, add these up, 4, 6, 4, and you keep on going. That's Pascal's triangle. You just build it. Once you learn how to build it, then you're good. We'll go a couple more rows. So 6, 15, 20, 15. Six. I'm gonna do one more row just to show you, right? So bring down the ones. Seven, twenty-one, thirty-five, thirty-five, twenty-one, seven. So that's the scale triangle down seven rows. Like you keep on going for as long as you want. It's always gonna work out that way. So how, like, okay, how do I use this? Well, let's look at the exact same problems we just did. Right, here's the exact same problems. Minus the ten ones. Then go ten rows. So 3, 1, the way this works is like this. If you read Pascal's triangle. This row right here is row 2. How do I know? Because it's a 2 right there. This is row 3, row 4, row 5, row 6, row 7. That's row 2. This is row 1. And this is row 0. Now here's the key. So let's we, we want to find 3, 1. So what we're going to go here, here's row 3. Now the way it works is like this. The key thing about this is start at zero. So right here is three zero, three one, three two, three three. I wanted three one. So it's this number right here. So this is just three. Now let's look at four two. So row 4, 4, 0, 4, 1, 4, 2. So 6. All right, same thing I got up here, 3, 6. And then the last one there, 7, 3. So here's 7, row 7, <clears throat> 7, 0, 7, 1, 7, 2, 7, 3. 35, just like I got up there. So that's another way of doing it. Right, so so far you learned two ways to simplify a choose thing, a binomial coefficient. One is doing with, using the formula sheet, which using the formula which I will give you. Right, so just simplify it mathematics. Other way is using Pascal's triangle. And by the way, there's some shortcuts with this <coughs> based on Pascal's triangle. So like anytime you see n over zero, right? So n zero, if you notice, all the zeros are one. It's automatically one. If you ever see n over one. That's the first row. Well, it's, it's whatever row you're talking about. So here, 6, 1 would just be 6. And likewise, if you ever see n over n, well, that's just the last value in the row. So that's also just 1. So there's some like little shortcuts. 
so that you can know it's like, oh, three, one, automatically made three. If I gave you, let's say, for example, five, five, seven, one, six, zero, right? Five, five, oh, they're the same, automatically one because it's the last row. Seven was always the top number. And then anytime you're over zero, it's just like the last one. It's automatically one. So there's some shortcuts. Um, what's the other way to do it? On your calculator. So if you bring us your calculator, something like this. The way we do, like, say, 3, 1, is if we put a 3 down, you go to math over probability, and then NCR. That's what this is. It's choose. So that one, then you put it, th and then you put a 1, and you get it, 3. Let's look at 7, 3, right? So I'm going to put 7, math, NCR, 3, 35. Right, so lots of ways to do this. Why if it's seven to three? Right, so again, by hand, I expect you know how to do it. Pascal Strongo, if you prefer, or with the calculator. So now let's actually do the bottom of the theorem. So this is the form I will give you, not the form I like though. So the form I like is this. If I give you this, bottom of the theorem says to do this. Take the top number, we start counting at zero. We take the first term and the second term. And then we're going to go up, top number over 1 now, because we're counting up, first term, second term. We're going to keep on doing this, so like n over 2, first term, second term. And we're going to keep on doing this until the top and bottom match. n over n, first term, second term. So and you're like, okay, that's, that's not too bad. Well, not done yet. Next, we're going to do powers. So we start, so it's a 0. Uh, so the first thing is these two always match. So if that's a zero, this is a zero. That's a one, this is a one. That's a two, this is a two. If that's an n, that's an n. They always match. Second thing, the power here and the power here have to add it to be that n right there. So in this case, zero and n, one and n minus one, that'll make more sense later. Like let's say this was a 10 and that's a one, it's be nine. Right, same thing, if that was a 10, that's a 2, this has to be 8. So we say n minus 2, and n plus what equals n is 0. That is the binomial theorem, right there. I cannot draw a straight line. That's what it is. So let's actually use it to expand something. So this one right here. So if I want to expand this, I'm going to start with a 3 right here. So it's going to be 3 over 0, first term, second term. And then move up, 3, 1, first term, second term. Keep on going, 3, 2, first, second, plus 3, 3, first, second. Right, not done, I gotta do the powers. Now remember the bottom power always matches this number, the second one. And then these two things that added to be 3. So in this case, 0 plus 3, 1 plus 2 would get me 3, 2 plus 1 would get me 3, and 3 plus 0 would get me 3. And that's the setup to it. So you do that, you get already half credit. Now we just got to know how to simplify this. So first things first, how do we simplify these things? Well, that's Pascal's triangle thing. Or use your calculator, or use the formula. That's how we simplify those. That's why we spent those like 10 minutes going over how to do that. So this one's actually really easy to use Pascal's triangle because right here is row three. So I know it's gonna be one, three, three, one. Like it tells you right away. It's just gonna be one, three, three, one. Again, if you want, right? The, also the little tricks I taught you. Anytime it's over zero, it's automatically one. Anytime they're the same, it's automatically one. Anytime it's over one, it's automatically one. And the one I should have said that didn't, if the difference is one, automatically the top number. That's what I'm here. So that's how you do that, right? Again, I don't care if you use a calculator, Pascal's triangle, or do it by hand. And then next, well, x to the third is just x to the third, so th these are being multiplied. 19 to the zero power is one. x squared is this x squared. One to the one is one. They're gonna be multiplied. x to the first is x to the first. One squared is one. x to the zero is one. 18 to the zero power is one. And one cubed is one. Let me just simplify a little bit. 
And we are done. That is Fiscal's triangle, the most basic form. Let's do another expanding one so you can see the idea. And let's actually do this one. And for our sake, let's make this a four. So we don't do this forever. Okay, same idea, right? I'm gonna start with the power. So four over zero, first term, second term. Notice it's a negative, I don't care, I put the negative in there. Then we're gonna go next term, four, one, it's a four. First term, second term. And then four, two, first term, second term. And then four, three, first term, second term. And then finally, finally, four, four. So same to that effect. Right, now we gotta do the powers, don't forget. Right, bottom one always matches the second. And then the next power, don't get confused with everything else. All I'm looking at is the powers right here. That's a zero, that's a four. I gotta make these two add to that number. So it has to be a four. It's a one, so this must be a three, because one plus three is four. A two, two, two plus two is four. Three, one, four, zero, right? Again, that's like half the credit. I'm able to write all that out. You understand what's going on? Now all I gotta do is algebra, just simplify it. Again, how do we get these? I could do lots of ways, use your calculator, Pascal's triangle, or do it by hand. I'm gonna use the fact that I know anytime it's over zero, it's automatically one. Anytime it's over a one, it's automatically a top number. Anytime the difference is one, it's the top number. Anytime it's over the top, it's one. So the only one I don't know is four, two. So again, I can use a calculator, formula sheet, I'm sorry, by hand, or Pascal's triangle. All right, four, two, we did it earlier. Four, zero, four, one, four, two, so six. Right, that's all that work. That part is done. Let's move on to the rest part, rest of it. W to the fourth is W to the fourth. Anything to the zero power is automatically one. W to the third is W cubed. Negative two Y to the first power. Now keep in mind, this is all of it. That one goes to both of them. A lot of people mess that up. It's still a negative two Y. A lot of people mess this up also, guys. These are being multiplied. So I should get negative 8w cubed y. So many people give me something like this. And that is so wrong. Right? You're being multiplied, not added, multiplied. Anytime they're in the same little thing here, just multiply them all. So the same thing, I'm multiply all these. W squared is w squared. Now again, watch out, that two goes to both of them. So negative two squared is four, y squared is y squared. Again, these are all being multiplied. So I get positive 24 w squared y squared. Over here, w to the first. That three, watch it, goes with all of them. Negative two cubed y cubed. So I get negative eight y cubed. And again, all be multiplied. So negative 32 w y cubed. And since zero power is one, that four goes to both of them. So two to the fourth, y to the fourth. 2 to the 4th is 16, y to the 4th. All be multiplied, so positive 16, y to the 4th. And then right here, all be multiplied, w to the 4th. Right, I know, it's long. That's the way it puts, that's the way the binomial theorem works. It's actually still way shorter than multiplying it out four times. But that's the binomial theorem in a nutshell. Right, so that's, the bad news is it's kind of long. The good news is that I'm not going to ask you to do expand all the way out very, very often. What I'm going to do instead is do something like this. I'm going to ask you to find me the sixth term of this. So here's the thing to keep in mind. The sixth term, if I go up here, well, I don't have a sixth term, but let's look for the third term. Let's say I was looking for the third term here. This is the first term, four, zero, first term. Second term is four, one. Third term is four, two. It's always gonna be one less. So if you're looking for a term, it's always one less, right? If you're not sure, just write it out like I'm gonna do right here, right? The sixth term will be 10, zero, 10, one, 10, two is the third term, 10, three, 10, four, 
10, 5 is the sixth one, right? Right, so if I'm asking for a term number, it's always one less. So how do I do this? Well, let's do what we know, right? No matter what, I know this, right? Highest, that top, right, that top number right there goes there. First term, second term, right? And the first term is C, the second term is D. That's all I know for now, right? That's 10 goes there, first term, second term. What's next? I want the sixth term, so it's always one less, so it's gonna be six minus one is five. Okay, what else do we know? Well, five, that number down here should match the number right here. And if that's a five, remember the number right here, these two should have that would be 10, which in this case, case happens to also be five. And that's the setup. You get that far, you get half credit. What's for next? Simplify it. 10, five, I could do, I could do the formula sheet. I'm sorry, I could do the by hand. It's a little big though. Let me use a calculator. So remember the way we do that, we go 10, math, NCR, over probability, and then five, 252. So yeah, good choice. I did not want to do that by hand. C, C to the fifth is C to the fifth. D squared is this D squared. And there we go, we found the sixth term. That's simple. That's the setting it's more like I'm gonna ask you on the, on the quiz and test. So let's do a couple more, make sure we got this. I want the fifth term of this. So before I even look at this, let's set up what we know. I know it has to be an eight. I know the first thing has to be an X and the second thing has to be a three Y, right? That's what I know just from the very start. It could be any question. I know I'm gonna have that no matter what. Now I said it wants the fifth term. So that's really the fourth because it's gonna be A4 because we start at A0, A1, A2, right? It's gonna be A4, the fifth one. And whatever that one is, matches the one right here. And these two at that, it'd be eight. So again, I got another four. Eight, four, you can do it, with, you can do it by hand, Pascal's triangle, we can do it with a calculator real quick. Eight, math, over probability, NCR. Hit four, you get 70, that's not too bad. X to the fourth is just X to the fourth. And again, watch out right here, that four goes with both of them. It's, you notice it's not a plus sign, I can't, and when it's being multiplied, that goes to both of them. So, so it's like three Y times three Y times three Y. Three to the fourth, y to the fourth. That's eighty-one. Y to the fourth. These are all being multiplied. So if you're not sure, use your calculator. Times that by eighty-one. Five six seventy. X four y four. Right again. That's the idea. Just make sure we understand how to do these. Let's look at the sixth term of this one. I'm gonna do a couple more. So same idea here, right? Before I even look at this, write out what we know. It's eight, has to be two C, and it has to be negative three D. Right, no matter what, that's to me the setup. No matter what. Now I want the sixth term, right? And like we said, it's always one less, so it's gonna be five, because we started at A zero. Whatever that is, this has to be the same thing. These two things at that would be eight, so this must be three. And that's the idea. So figure out what this is. I'm using my I'm gonna use the formula this time. So it's eight factorial over five factorial, three factorial. Remember the way you break it up is you do this one until it matches on the bottom ones. Then this one you just simplify. Three times two times one. These cancel. Three times two is six, I cancel the six. And I'll put eight times seven. Oh I hate eight times seven. Fifty six. My least favorite multiplication. So that's 56. This three goes to both of them. Two to the third, C to the third. Eight, C cubed. That five goes to both of them. Negative three to the fifth, I don't know, I'm gonna put in my calculator. D to the fifth. Let's see. Remember parentheses, negative three to the fifth. 243, yeah. So this is the same thing as saying negative 243. Keep in mind, these are all being multiplied. Don't give me this minus 243, I hate that. They're all being multiplied. So I need 243 times eight times 56. Ah, oh, crap. Negative 243 times eight times 56. 56, not 26. So negative 108864. 
big number, C3, D5. Right? So like that, that's binomial theorem. We're going to do a couple more just to make sure we got it. And then we do something a little tricky. So on this one, I want the last term. So again, you can probably look at that. I know it has to be this, this, and this, right? What's the last term? What's where these match? So that has to be a five. Well, if that's a five, that's a five. And if that's five, and that's five, remember five plus what equals five? Zero. Look how fast this one is. Five, five, automatically one. Anything to zero power? Automatically one. Y to the fifth? Y to the fifth. So that's my answer. Because you're multiplying. Done. Again, look at this one. Before I even start, I know how to start this off. It's five, three A, eight B. Right? That's the way I'm always gonna start off. Whatever the whatever the power is, and then the first term, second term. Now they want the first term. Now remember, we don't start at one, we start at zero. So if that's a zero, this is a zero. And zero plus what equals five? Well, five. Five to the zero is automatically one. Five to zero is automatically one. 18 to the zero power is automatically one. So it's all about this guy right here. Distribute three to the fifth, a to the fifth, 243, a to the fifth. And that's all I got. So that's the basics of using the binomial theorem. Just write out what you know, right? It's always the top power over whatever, first term, second term, and just fill it out. Okay, so let's do something a little tricky here, and then the last two will end up with. So look at this one. They want the x a third in the expansion of this, right? So I don't want to turn them. I'm saying, hey, what's the one, what's the term with x to three in it? So how do we do this? The exact same way. Write out what we know. Highest power is 11, so I'm looking for the 11th. First term, second term, right? That's what I know. Then now look what I want. I want x three. Well, where's my x at? Right here. So what power does it need? Three. And then now look what, how it falls. If that's a three, this has to be a three. If that's a three, three plus what equals 11? Eight. And that's it. We just gotta simplify this. 11, three, I have no idea what 11, three is. So we have calculators for 11 math and CR three, 165. One to the eighth power is still one. That three goes to both of these, so it's two to the third, x to the third. That's eight. Well, I need to multiply eight times 165. Again, I don't know what that is. So times eight, 1320, x to the third. All right, that's the idea. Let's do one final one that's a little more tricky, but the same concept. I want x10 in the expansion of this. So first, again, let's write out what we know. Has to be a 10 up there because of that. First number has to be three. Second term is this. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. They want x10. So here's my x. What happens if I put a 10 right here though? That is actually gonna be a 20. It's too big. Right, I need, I need this to be 10. So I gotta put a five up here. Because five times two is 10. So if that's a five, that makes this a five also. If that's a five, five plus what equals 10 is also another five. That's this one, right? And then all we do is simplify it, 10 C5. We'll use our calculator again, because I think it's gonna be pretty big, not terribly big, but bigger than I wanna deal with. So 252. Three to the fifth is 243. That five goes to both of them. So two to the fifth, x to the 10. Again, which is the one I wanted. That's why I couldn't put a 10 there because it'd be too big. I want x to the 10. And then now you just gotta simplify that. Uh, use the calculator. 252 times 243 times 252 to the fifth, which is 32. And I get that monstrosity, 195.9552. I believe that's right, I don't care at this point. X to the 10, and that's the idea.